Back here, corrupting youth one at a time. Obey. <laughs> hey, anyway, good morning. Very early in the morning, of course. Okay, let's have a look here. That heater always comes on. So I'm going to have to talk loud. I'm going to leave it on because it's kind of cold out. <laughs> well, uh, got a couple of things to talk about. And uh, when you want to do, oh, first, a disclaimer. I am not a spindle expert. I have built spindles and rebuilt spindles, but the very simplest of them, and I mean spindles now, they are super complicated. And I got a good story. Uh, a local company, big company, trying to save money, sending a CNC spindle. And I mean, uh, I didn't look at it or anything, but I've seen some CNC spindles on serious CNC machines. And uh, I, I think the bearings cost about $7,000 and they botched it up. So, you know, <laughs> oh, so sometimes it's best to uh, seek uh, a profession. But myself, in my little bing bang operation, um, back at the time, I'm trying to think what it was about 20 years ago, it was around 4,000 bucks to uh, send the head of your uh, hard inch to hard inch and have them rebuild the, uh, the spindle. And so, and uh, it was similar uh, uh, with more. That, that was about an average for uh, um, a spindle rebuilt from them on the jig board, I don't know, maybe 25 years ago. So it's an expensive thing. And both the more and the hard inch uh, are, are very, the hard inch is a very simple spindle, and, and really so is the more. It's just got another pair of. Uh, angular contact bearings and the Monarch 10 double E I've never been into the headstock of one of these but it's sort of a marvel of engineering the way they built that and it's got like um, a pair of angular contact bearings at the nose and then a unit uh, an angular contact bearing at the tail end that floats for uh, um, heat compensation. So how they get that kind of run out, how this thing works, it, it's, it's just a marvel in, of uh, engineering. And uh, you know, I showed you how much deflection the, uh, the spindle has static sitting there. But when that thing spins up, like I, you know, demonstrated that it, <laughs> it starts losing that deflection. And that's a ball bearing spindle. Now, Tim can bear and spindle something else. Okay, one of the things I wanted to talk about is uh, making your own tools and try to take the mystery out of it. Um, if you want to do stuff like I'm doing here with the jig board machine and, um, and this slave here, now you got to understand I have to have the tool and cutter grinder uh, for uh, commercial work, not so much now, but I, I did it because it had to be consistent, 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 and <laughs> try to minimize screwing up expensive material. You know? <laughs> so with the tool and cutter grinder, I can get a really consistent cutter very quickly. But in your home shop, you know, you got your time, and uh, you can actually, if you take the time, uh, do uh, good work on carbide, for example, with a green wheel, with, which micro fractures the carbide. That's why green wheels are bad. But you can use a green wheel and then um, use a lap and, and to get your final edge. If the green wheel's all you have, use a lap, do a radius on it, learn to do that. <clears throat> and one of the 
very, you go way, way back. What's the best thing to learn? And I'm going to tell you right now, uh, the best thing that I've ever seen to learn, <laughs> seen, that, that's very helpful all along the way, is to learn to hand sharpen like a 3 8 drill bit on a bench grinder. Big step right there. And it takes practice, And but it's one thing uh, to uh, uh, start off. And that's my corrupting youth tip of the day. Try to learn to uh, hand grind a, a drill bit and it'll just go a long ways and uh, people will be amazed. I uh, uh, have done that so long. I was, I was on a, a guy's job site. A, a guy had a, has a uh, construction business and they were drilling into something and uh, is a way, it was a ways to the hardware store, and uh, they doled up uh, a 3 8 drill bit, or uh, it was 3 8 and they're drilling through stainless steel. It was in a kitchen. Some of that stuff could get hard. And, you know, you know, and uh, I says, hey, wait a minute, what do you got for a grinder around here? And all they had was an angle grinder. I got that thing going, set in between two two by fours, and hand sharpened <laughs> the drill bit for them right there, and they just about fell over. Never seen that. But if you, <laughs> if you learn to sharpen on, on a bench grinder, you can do it on, on, uh, with an angle grinder with your foot on it between a couple of two by fours. Just the tip of the day. Now. <laughs> This is another one that's uh, uh, a gotcha. And I was watching the video of me uh, when I was cutting um, the metric thread and the uh, English thread. And I was using the half nuts on the English thread and I actually grabbed a feed lever, which <laughs> wouldn't matter. But I did that because I was out of practice. And so, if you're, uh, the worst thing is to really put a lot of effort into a, a part, and it happens. And the last thing you do is cut a thread sometimes, is to screw that up. So, a really good thing to do before you're gonna do that is just take a piece of scrap metal, stick it in the chuck, and just get used to uh, engaging the half nuts and, and all that. And that's good because uh, you get the lathe kind of juiced up and the half nuts not sticky, you know. So you kind of get a little practice on stuff like that. Now hold on, I'll be right back. Back here at the 10 double E. No, heater went off. Maybe you can hear me pretty good. Hey, now when you're doing something important, you know, like you're building a spindle and you got a bunch of effort into it, you got to cut a thread, you know, take a piece of scrap and practice it. Now, Acme threads are pretty difficult at times and, you know, maybe all the time. And the really uh, old books and stuff show what I'm going to show you. And uh, if... Uh, if you have um, a lathe without uh, uh, electric lead screw reverse or the mechanical uh, screw reverse that the hard inch had, you have to uh, be more cautious and careful about um, engaging the half nuts. So let's have a look at kind of a overview. I've got a metric thread to cut, uh, not a metric, but an Acme thread to cut, but it's internal. And uh, I'll show you some, uh, and you do the same external or uh, internal. And of course, it's easier to show um, external. Okay. So one, one of the things you can do if the material's tough and you can't plunge a store pot carbide full profile insert into it, you have to turn back the clock and go back uh, 100 years. <laughs> and I'll show you what, what's up. 
Okay, you can take the compound and um, put it at uh, um, parallel with the uh, with the ways, and and if you have a monarch ten double e, you can take a quad ring. See that off a of Harley Davidson primary cover and snap it on there. It'll keep crap from getting under there. I showed you that. Okay, now what I'm going to show you here is, uh, and this is the only example I have handy of, of a uh, Acme thread. This is an uh, old cl table clamp here. And what I have in here is a uh, uh, Acme shape tool. Let me show you that. Set that down here. And, and of course, this is your uh, standard Acme thread gauge here. So it's at 14 and a half or whatever on each side. You see that? I, I've got it shaped kind of strangely because I believe the last thread uh, Acme I did with this tool. Well, the, <laughs> I've got a bunch of these kicking around. It seems like I make a new tool every time I cut them. And this is a, a high speed steel, which works real good. Okay. So I'm going to get the, so uh, we got that established. So here's the screw right there. And I hope you can see that if I get that just right. You see that tool is narrower than the thread. Okay. So let's say this is some tough material to cut and you want to put that thread in it. So what what I do actually to start, I would start gouging it out with this cheaper old actually a worn 60 degree insert. I'd start gouging the metal out with that, no wider than the than the thread, of course, you know, but I get it close with that, and then start working that narrow tool in there. And then start shaving the edges, the flanks, okay, by adjusting this. And with this setup here, you know, rather than just uh, doing the 14 and a half uh, degree and shoving it in, you can do that tool too. And don't be afraid uh, to remove and sharpen the tool. Or, you know, uh, that shouldn't scare you. And, uh, well, okay, I think I made the point there. And uh, if you got the uh, um, important job to do, uh, put a piece of scrap in there and start trying it. And uh, if you're not familiar with this, what I just showed you, put a scrap piece of material in there, grind a tool, and start doing it, and uh, you will be an expert before you know it. And the same goes for the close tolerance. We're talking about fitting uh, super precision bearings, and those tolerances I've shown you were for uh, the the highest accuracy bearings made. You know the uh, grade nine bearings. So. Um, if you're going to cut a journal, hopefully you can have enough material to practice on. And we got that deflection thing to work on. So to work on getting deflection out, you want, you want to practice on something else besides, um, you know, an important work piece. And that's, that's how you're going to get there. And it won't take you that long if, you know, uh, I bet you a couple of weeks of just goofing around, you, you can start really tightening up the tolerances. And I'll get a lot more into that. And it has a lot to do with the tooltip radius, what feeds the finest feeds your machine has, and the speeds. Okay.
Well, I'm going to load this video and hopefully I can pull that press apart today. It's just been kind of cold or windy or something. And uh, I'll be, I, I want to get that thread cut on that. And thanks for following along. Uh, everything I do is just fixing up my stuff and I turn the camera on. But, uh, I th and, and of course, you know, my mission of corrupting youth that's very important, very, very important. But uh, it's, a, it's a tough one here. You know, I've, uh, I've blocked more than a dozen meatheads off here, you know. And all i got to say to these clowns is get your own channel, huh? Show us something, huh? Show us something. Get out from behind that keyboard. All right? Okay, bye-bye. Hey, I had one more very important point to make, and it can't be argued with. It's like, you know, carbide inserts? Let me grab that one right here. This is a, a Dorian tool. It's just wonderful. It's got the lay down. Can you see that? Lay down and then the stand up here. Okay. But uh, at the speeds that you run a manual machine is, is not really adequate for this, okay? So almost 90% of the time, unless you're cutting into titanium and things like that, hard, hard, hard stuff, high-speed steel works just fine. And uh, uh, actually maybe <laughs> better <laughs> in many circum circumstances. So that's what I wanted to point out the problem with uh, um, with um, Acme thread, full profile um, carbide inserts. It, they're made for heavy machines running fast with heavy spindles and a fire hose of coolant on it. And that's how that stuff is. You can adapt these things to your manual machine, but it doesn't, doesn't exactly mean that the old high-speed steel is uh, quite obsolete. And especially on uh, uh, like acme threads and shaving the flanks. And you can really get an edge on high-speed steel. I mean sharp. And uh, you can on carbide too, but uh, it's, it's really quite easy to get uh, uh, high speed steel very, very sharp. So you can remove the tool like I showed you that and, and sharpen it. Then get it back in there and uh, it's uh, uh, not that hard to get it back indexed in, into the thread with the uh, compound. Uh, set parallel to the ways. Okay, I'm gonna be doing a whole bunch of stuff. If if it looks good, I'll turn on the camera. Okay, bye bye.